Emily, middle class African Americans struggle against a number of stereotypes and prejudice from both the white and black worlds. How does class complicate racism in America? I think, you know, one thing I, I often say in the classroom um, when we talk about race, you know, what are we talking about? And don't we sometimes use race as a shorthand as a, as a really insufficient and, uh, uh, you know, just sort of a, it doesn't do the work we ask it to do. We ask race to absorb categories like class, mm -hmm. sexuality, gender. Um, when we say black, you know, are we talking about black men? Are we talking about black straight men? Um, you know, men of a certain age? Uh, where, where do these other factors come into play? And I think often we substitute race, race functions as a poor substitute for class. Mm. You know, when we think about blackness. I mean, there's, what is a black community, for instance? You know, aren't there various black communities with various, you know, kinds of objectives and uh, places, moments, places of cohesion and places of, you know, uh, dissension? So um, class is the factor. I mean, it's a factor in this culture. We often don't want to talk about it. We're not supposed to have class differences right. in this culture. Not in you know, not in America. <laughs> but, um, but I think race and class are often, you know, thought of in synonymous kinds of terms. And I think for, uh, for middle class African Americans, I mean, there's a whole body of work now, black people talking about when you have a certain kind of education level and when you have a certain kinds of, uh, certain kinds of resources, it, it sort of a natu naturally separates you from concerns of maybe the overwhelming numbers of black people who are you know, dispossessed and lacking those resources. So you have different concerns. Mm -hmm. You're in this nether world, you know, where do you fit? Are you authentically black anymore? I mean, this is, and this has, you know, been a problem that's affected black people since the inception of blackness. I mean, it really hasn't, it's not new, you know, right. it's not new <laughs> to the century or to, you know, um, you read about in the slave narratives, you know, mm. of, uh, Frederick Douglass and Harriet Jacobs, and they point to that. They, they were occupied a different category. Right. Um, so I think often we, we do, we, we talk about race, we're really talking about class. Um, you know, we, ha we have, uh, you know, spokespeople we, we look to, I'm thinking about someone like Bill Cosby, you know, who, who, you know, kind of pontificates right. about blackness, but really he's a rich, he's a celebrity, and he's, that's where that's his position, yeah. you know. Or, or even uh, the election of Barack Obama, yeah, sure. you know, has, mm -hmm. has that changed the conversation? Right. I think it is. I mean, I think, you know, there's a conversation about whether or not he's, he's really black, you know, in the terms that we use to define blackness. And um, something I said in the Michelle Obama book is that, if we're going to question his racial authenticity, we might also question the authenticity of someone like Frederick Douglass or W.E.B. Du Bois, mm. um, Malcolm X. I mean, they all had sort of white people in their white ancestors mm -hmm. in their family tree. So, what is authentic blackness? Um, can it be something that one can choose? Does it have to be uh, this? How is it determined? Mm. How much blood does it take? You know, to, to make you authentic, to make to make for you to qualify. And, and then we find out that DNA says there is no such thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emily, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ren.